Seriously, don't wait until the last minute. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you guys about Jesus coming back for us and what we should be doing in the meantime. Because like, if you don't know, Jesus, who is God, he came to the world and he lived a perfect life. And then he died for our sins. He paid the penalty that we deserve to pay so that if we believe in him, we can have eternal life with him. And a few days after he died, he rose again from the dead. And he saw a whole bunch of people and, and he talked with them. And then after a while, he went up into heaven. He just floated up into the clouds. Jesus said that he went up into heaven to prepare a place for us. And he said that someday he's coming back for us. So like, if you believe in Jesus, even if you die, you will live forever with him in heaven. But there are some people who will not die before they get to go to heaven. Because at some point, Jesus is coming back to the earth to take us with him so that we can be where he is. And nobody knows exactly when Jesus is coming back. If someone tells you that they know when Jesus is coming back, they're wrong. They don't. Jesus said nobody knows. And it is very important that when Jesus does come back, he finds us doing what we should be doing. You know, I'm, I'm old enough these days that I get to stay home by myself sometimes just for a little while. Like if my mom goes to the grocery store or something, sometimes I can stay home all by myself. And I'm big enough to watch over myself, but I'm not quite big enough to watch over my brother by myself. And so this one time my mom took my brother to the grocery store. And while she was gone, she said that I should clean up the living room because me and Stephen, we made kind of a mess in the living room. And she asked me to do the dishes. And she said that after she gets back from getting groceries, we were going to go to our friend's house. Now, I've stayed home by myself a few times when my mom goes to get groceries, and I've tried, like, timing it to see how long she's gone, and sometimes it's, it's really varied. Like, it's very different, different times. Like, sometimes she's only gone for, like, 20 minutes, and sometimes she's gone for, like, two hours. It kind of depends on the day. It depends on what she's getting. It depends on how many people are at the grocery store. So it's really hard for me to guess how long it's going to take her. It's hard for her to guess how long it's going to take her, too. And after she left, I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, it probably wouldn't take me that long to clean the living room and do the dishes. I wonder if I could just hang out for a while and then get to my chores. Because if she's going to be gone for like two hours, I could probably honestly, you know, just hang out for like an hour or more. Probably even maybe like an hour and a half. But eventually I decided, you know, mom gave me these jobs to do. I should just do them right away. And then if I've got extra time left over, I can, you know, I can hang out after that. And so that's what I did. I cleaned the living room and I did the dishes and it didn't take me all that long. And I actually even put my, my jacket and my shoes by the door so they were all ready to go. So once I was all done with my stuff, I just sat down and I watched TV for a little while. And it really was a very little while. It was one of those short days where it did not take mom very long at the grocery store at all. And when she got home, I helped, you know, her and Steven put the groceries away and I got my shoes and my jacket on. And then we got in the car and we went to our friend's house. It was a good day. A really good day. But if my mom had come home and she had found that I had not cleaned the living room and I had not done the dishes like she asked me to, that would not have gone very well. And, you know, it's not just important that my mom, you know, when she comes home, she finds me doing what she told me to do. It's important that she finds that I have done the thing she asked me to do. You know, not just that I am doing it. Because I could, you know, I can hear... I can hear when the car is pulling up into the driveway and I can hear when the garage door is opening. So I could have just like sat and watched TV the whole time she was gone. And then as soon as I hear the garage door opening being like, oh, I need to start doing the dishes. But if she comes home and she sees me doing the dishes, but she sees that the living room isn't clean and I've only done like two dishes and she's been gone for like a long time, she's not going to be happy. Even if I'm, you know, doing the thing she said to do, I didn't do the thing she said to do, if that makes sense. Right, like she gave me some responsibilities and if she comes home and I'm doing those responsibilities but I haven't been doing them the whole time, I'm not fulfilling those responsibilities. I haven't been doing what I should have been doing. And it's the same with us and God. You know, God has given us things we ought to be doing, right? They could be summed up in like two commandments. Love God, love others. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor is everybody. And Jesus said that when he returns, it is very important that he finds us doing what we ought to be doing. 
Now, the Bible says that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will have eternal life, right? Your name gets written in the book of life. And after Jesus comes back, there will be a time where he looks in the book of life. And if your name is written in the book of life, you get to live with him forever and ever and ever. And again, to have your name in there, you got to believe in Jesus. That's it. But if your name isn't in the book of life, you go into what's called the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. Eternal death. Not eternal life, but eternal death. And some Christians might disagree with me on this, but I really believe that if you believe in Jesus, you will have eternal life. I believe that because that's what Jesus said. So I don't think that when Jesus comes back, if he finds you doing what you oughtn't be doing, I don't think he's going to be like, well, lake of fire for you, right? If you believe in Jesus, your name's in the book of life. It's sort of like if my mom came home and she found that I did not do any of the jobs that I was supposed to do, I don't think she'd be like, that's it, Douglas. You're not my son anymore. You didn't do the dishes. You didn't clean the living room. That's it. Get out. You know, I don't think she'd do that. But I do believe that we would have a very difficult conversation. And I don't know exactly what it'll look like if when Jesus comes back, he finds us doing what we oughtn't be doing. But I know it will not be good. Jesus said there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Like, ugly crying bad news. We want to be doing what God told us to do while he's up in heaven. You know, there are some people out there who say, well, you know, I believe in Jesus, and I believe that I have eternal life. And if you do believe in Jesus, I, I believe that you have eternal life. Again, because that's what Jesus said. But there are people who say, okay, I, I'm saved. I'm good. The end. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do now. And they use they use faith in Christ as like, fire insurance. They're like, well, I'm not going to lake a fire, so that's good enough. No, it's not good enough. Do not accept that as good enough. We need to be doing what God has called us to do. We need to be listening to him. We need to walk with God. We need to learn about him. We need to learn from him. We need to show him our love, and we need to love those who he loves, which is everybody. When Jesus comes back, it ought to be something that is very, very happy and exciting for us. But if we are not doing what we ought to be doing, it will not be that. It will be a bad thing. It will be a sad thing. And so my challenge to you guys today is that you would do what God has called you to do, what he's called all of us to do, which is love him and love others. Right? The first and second of the greatest commandments are love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second greatest commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. We're supposed to learn about God. We're supposed to learn from him and, and talk to him and walk with him and obey him. And we're supposed to share his love with others. We're supposed to tell them about Jesus' love for them and show them what God's love looks like with our words and actions. And one of the things that's different about what God has called us to do and what my mom asked me to do was that, you know, the chores that my mom asked me to do, those were things where it's like, do the dishes, done. Clean the living room, done. Those are things where it's like, I did this thing and it's done and I sit down on the couch. But the Bible says that following God is like running a race. And that race is not done until we are at Jesus' side. Whether we're with Jesus because we have died or we're with Jesus because he has come back to get us. And you know, the Bible says that there will be signs that point to his coming, that point to his return. But if we start seeing the signs, that's not the time to start doing what we should be doing, right? Just like hearing my mom, you know, open the garage door is not the time that I should have been doing the dishes. We should be doing what we're supposed to be doing now. And if you're thinking, oh, well, it's too late for me. It's not too late for you. Start now if you haven't started. I look forward to Jesus coming back a lot. Maybe it'll be in my lifetime. But either way, when I see Jesus, more than anything, I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. And I want that for you too. So let's follow God so that we can be ready for Jesus' return. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. We don't know when he's coming back, and we also don't know just in general when our time on this earth is done. So we need to be doing what we ought to be doing now and keep running the race laid out for us. So let's all follow God. Let's walk with him, obey him, and show the world his love. 
so that when we see Jesus face to face, when he returns and descends from heaven and all the angels with him and the trumpet sounds, that will be a day where we can be so, so happy. Don't think that you've got all the time in the world and don't think that everything will be fine without it because you don't know how much time you have. And like I said, I don't know exactly what will happen if Jesus comes back and he finds you not doing what you ought to be doing, but I can tell you for sure it won't be good. Let's be ready for Jesus' return. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. And yeah, I hope that you will do what you can to be ready for Christ's return. That you will run the race with excellence that God has laid out before you. Do what God has called you to do. Because yeah, this idea of like using Jesus as, as fire insurance and nothing else, it, it's a terrible idea. Again, it's sort of like, it, it would be like me sitting on the couch and, you know, watching TV the whole time my mom's gone instead of doing the chores and being like, well, it's not like she's going to kick me out of the house and disown me. Yeah, she's probably not going to do that. But I do not want to see that conversation, you know, when she comes home and finds me not doing what I ought to be doing. Weeping and gnashing of teeth might be a pretty good descriptor of that conversation. So yeah, I really hope that you will do what God has called you to do. You'll love him and you'll love others. It's a hard thing and we're not going to do it perfectly. But let's do our best. Let's be ready for Christ's return so that when he does come back, which will come at a time that we don't expect, we will be excited and it'll be the best day ever. Also, I should point out that if you are worried about a loved one who has died and you're like, oh no, they died before Jesus came back, you don't have to worry about that at all. Paul talks about that specifically. Those who have died who believe in Jesus, when Jesus returns, you know, they get to be with Jesus first, before us. And we'll get caught up in the clouds with Jesus and all of them. It'll be great. Let's look forward to his coming and do what we ought to be doing.